Uh, yeah, my name's uh, Mike Saunders. Some of you may know me, um, or some of you may have seen how I was uh, introduced this morning by Florian and the rest of the team. So I work in uh, marketing and public relations for the Document Foundation since February. Um, but my background is also in journalism, uh, and specifically Linux journalism. So that's why I want to give this presentation today talking to the press, relating on my experiences uh, in both of my roles as a journalist and in marketing. So, uh, well, even if, even if it's flashing on and off, you can hopefully see it. Any idea? Okay. Change to a second machine and see if that helps. Actually, I can probably carry on with this. You can all see that anyway. Let's carry on with this. So, yeah, a bit of my background. I have been working as an IT journalist for almost 20 years now. And when I started, it actually felt like a real job. Like, you'd actually go around, go to people, interview them. People would send you things. You'd be on the phone all the time. Whereas being a computing journalist today is... You know, an internet job. You do almost everything online. You get sent stuff to you, with press releases. There's not the same kind of real involvement with people as there used to be uh, back in the day. So, yeah, as, as a journalist, I've even had a bottle of whiskey sent to me from New Zealand that somebody had made themselves. So, yeah, I didn't want to try that, especially early in the morning. Um, so there's a couple of things I've worked for. Linux Format Magazine. We crowdfunded Linux Voice in 2013, um, an entirely crowdfunded open source magazine. We give our content back uh, and give money back to the community. So that's sort of my background. Started back in the 90s, Red Hat 5.1, if anybody remembers that, from uh, got a magazine cover disc. Had to recompile my own kernel just to get sound working. I mean, those, those were fun days, but I discovered this community, the free and open source software community, GNU, Linux, uh, all the sharing, collaboration, the importance of freedom. And, and then, of course, I started using Star Office with, I think, 5.2, which it had like the desktop inside the desktop, if anybody remembers that. It was an a sort of interesting interface. And then, of course, we had OpenOffice.org. And... Here's a couple of uh, um, nostalgic moments for anybody who remembers the Linux box sets back then. It was like Christmas getting one of these because, you know, in the time of dial-up internet access, downloading stuff took ages. So when you got a huge box through your door full of manuals and full of disks packed with packages, it was brilliant. Anyway, so as a journalist, I was always getting messages from marketing people, public relations people, trying to get me to cover their products. Uh, most of these were completely irrelevant messages because they were for software for Windows or Mac OS um, or hardware that doesn't work with Linux. I'd often respond kind of sarcastically to these messages, like, oh, that sounds great. Let me know when you've got a kernel driver for Linux. And, they didn't, they didn't understand at all. And also, so many of the press releases that I, that I was sent as a journalist, and still are, are either really, really boring, just the same co copy and paste nonsense, or they're so full of buzzwords, so full of hyperactivity. You can't take them seriously. You know, somebody's announcing a, a, a mundane product or piece of software, and they're like, it's world-changing, it's going to revolutionize your life. Oh, this is working now. So. So yeah, press releases, complete, usually really boring, full of buzzwords, not relevant at all. So yeah, in February this year, I moved from being a journalist, I still am to some extent, but I moved from being the journalist side to be the person supplying journalists with information. So I started working in the, in the marketing department with 
uh, Italo. So some of you may have seen the new features videos I made of LibreOffice and other stuff. But relevant to this discussion here is pitching journalists, contacting journalists. So for the LibreOffice 5.2 release, Italo and I contacted 15 journalists individually. We plucked them out, said we're going to focus on these. These are people who've covered LibreOffice before. They, they're aware of us. How can we get them, how can we encourage them to write something good about LibreOffice 5.2? We didn't just send them a press release on the day of the announcement. We thought, let's, let's focus on these people. So, why, why are we doing this? What's the goal? Again, you could just send a press release to a journalist and say, well, here's LibreOffice 5.2, you know, good luck. But when you target them, it's really, really important. And obviously, we need to raise awareness of LibreOffice. Many, um, many journalists out there, even tech journalists, have no idea we exist, especially um, some of them in the Windows world. They, you know, they just assume that um, we don't exist or we're some sort of obscure fork or we're only available on Linux. You know, th there is this giant awareness gap. I'm sure we can all agree with that, yeah? Um, it's better in, in the Linux world, like I say, but... Um, yeah, so, but if, if we get positive stories about LibreOffice, if we get them in the mainstream press, or at least the mainstream tech press, then that is huge for us. They won't always be 100% positive. They may talk about a bug they've discovered in a new release or another problem they've had, but we're out there. It legitimizes us. It says we're a real, pro real project and a real product worth talking about. Yep. Do I have to do both now? <laughs> oh, okay. So, yeah. So let's say you've seen a journalist on the internet, a tech journalist or somebody related to our field, and you think it would be great if they talked about LibreOffice. Yeah? This is especially useful outside of the English-speaking market because Italo and I have a lot of contacts with people, uh, English-speaking journalists, but all over the world there are so many communities that you know, we just can't cover because we don't know the languages. But it's always important to plan ahead before you go and contact a journalist. It's very easy to think, oh, I'll just send them a message saying, hey, you know, LibreOffice, have you heard of it? It's cool, or we've got a new release. That's all right, but if you plan ahead, you can get much, much better results. So here's four super crucial mega turbo championship rules that, are, that I've come up with anything. And the first thing to do is to read up on their previous work. So if you think, oh, this journalist could, could write a good story about LibreOffice for a magazine, for a blog, look at everything else they've done first. Look at their audience and their tone. Are they focused on business people? Are they focused on consumers? Because obviously you want to talk to them about different things then. If they're business focused and you want to tell them about LibreOffice 5.2, you talk about the document classification features and stuff like that. If they're more end user focused, you talk about the, the new features, the um, transitions, animations, changes to the interface, uh, and so forth. Um, yeah, so, and then look, have they actually written about LibreOffice before? This is also really important because you can, you, can, you can then determine how positive or negative they've been, if they've changed their opinion, if they've written something wrong, you know, which, which can happen. I, I've made that mistake as a journalist myself. You're, you're only human. Do they ever talk about Linux or free software? Do they tend to be positive or negative journalists? Some journalists tend to like really biting articles. They like to you know, hammer someone down and, and, really, and really sort of get people worked up. Some are really, really positive. They, they, they're more in line with the free software spirit and they want to encourage people. And lots of journalists, especially now, now let's say it's not a real job as it used to be with a hat on and a notebook. Lots of them now work for multiple websites. They're freelancers. So you'll see their work on website A, B, C from completely different uh, companies. So... You've decided to speak to a journalist and let them know about LibreOffice. There are some, other, there are some uh, good practices here. Introduce yourself first. Just say who you are. Don't just jump straight into, hey, you, here's LibreOffice. Give a little bit of background. Say you're involved, what you do. Importantly, don't write more than 200 words or thereabouts because journalists are lazy, uh, very lazy, and they don't have a lot of time because they're busy, you know, on Facebook and stuff. So if you, just, if you can summarize it in 200 words, then they can easily get an overview of what you want to say. And really, it should be that quick. 
You know, if, if you're contacting a journalist, you don't want to reel off all the list of every new feature in a new LibreOffice release. You want to say, this is cool, check it out. And give them a real story to talk about as well. So if you just say, oh, LibreOffice 5.3 has been released, check it out, well, so what? But if you can talk about a, an actual a benefit to people, if you can actually say why it's worth looking into, that's why I say do their work for them. If the journalist can take your message to them and say, hmm, I can turn that into a story, you know, with a few you know, changes and, and copy and paste, then they have an instant story. They don't have to spend a lot of time dealing with it. So try and do their work for them is always a, a good idea. Um, and then think about the language you want to use as well. A lot of us are geeks. We know a lot of the jargon, especially in the community and the technology. But even if the journalist knows that, then the journalist making a story then has to translate it all, maybe for their target audience. Again, that's a waste of their time. They just delete it and go back to playing Pokemon Go or whatever. So, uh, yeah, talk about the benefits. Always, always have a benefit. Always have a reason to contact them. Just saying X has happened, they're never, never interested. And then the slightly sort of controversial topic, which is why I've put it in red here, is avoiding hype and buzzwords. And I say here, do people want to be amazed by an office suite? We tend to use a lot of these words, like this was amazing or that was amazing. But is that, is that really what we're, what we're striving for? Some moments in life are amazing, or maybe a film or a moment in a video game. But in an office suite, people want to get their work done. Maybe they want to be impressed. You know, maybe they want to feel really good, but amazed? Is that the right sort of word um, for this? I'm, I'm skeptical of using them. So many press releases are full of everything is amazing. But when everything's amazing, then nothing can be normal. So, yeah. So here's um, a list of words that I recommend uh, avoiding. The, there was nice arrows here and, and happy, sad faces, but they've gone. Anyway, so yeah, amazing. Well, yeah, I think it's an it's overused word. It, it's, it's a buzzword. It's, it doesn't really... Buy. Impressive is good. You want to be impressed. If we can impress people, that's great. And I was like, incredible. Oh, it's incredible. Also used by marketing people all the time, but, you know... Remarkable is, is good. Revolutionary. Everything's revolutionary. But this goes back to what I was saying before. Do we want to tell people that everything's revolutionary? The user who's happy with their office suite, you know, maybe with a previous LibreOffice. If we tell them it's revolutionary, they think, oh, I've got to change everything. Here's another revolution. Here's another interface paradigm shift and, and all that nonsense. So unless something is a true revolution, like never been done before, then... It's not a good word to use. It can actually scare people off a lot of the time, especially when we're talking about serious productivity software. So market leading is a nicer term. And powerful, that's one of my pet peeves. My editors at magazines always complain that I use powerful, and I can see why, because it's, it doesn't really describe anything. What is powerful? Well, if a computer is powerful, is it fast? Has it got a lot of memory? Has it got a million USB 8 ports? Or... So feature-rich is a bit of a better term for that. I, and this is just my opinion anyway. I mean, it, I, I could be wrong, but I think the more that you avoid the buzzwords, the better. It makes us look good, and it helps to get the message across. So you've contacted a journalist. You've given them a message, a short message, saying LibreOffice 5.x release is out, or some other event has happened, and you hear nothing. And that is often the case. You can send messages to hundreds of journalists and maybe only hear back from a few. Um, it's, it's worth following up maybe once, maybe, 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 maybe twice, but pre preferably once, just after a few days, saying, hi there, I messaged you a few days ago uh, about LibreOffice, just checking if you've had time to look into it. And then, they, all being well, they'll go back through their mailbox and look at it, or maybe not. Um, but it could be that they just simply ignore it or it goes into their spam folder and there's not much you can do about that. Um, and then, yeah, keep looking on their website, see if they actually follow up, see if they cover your story, a new LibreOffice release. They may put it as part of another story. It may just be a footnote. They may do a, a whole complete story, in which case it's worth then emailing them saying, yeah, thanks for that, and, and ask, you know, saying, if you've got any questions, talk to us, talk to the community. And if they make a mistake, 
it's easy to get on social media and rant and say, you know, why didn't you do your research properly? But that's always, always, always uh, uh, counterproductive anyway. So what now? It's only 15 minutes in. But the point of this is, like I mentioned before, outside of the English-speaking market, this is really where we can spread word about LibreOffice. Italo and I have experience of talking to journalists in, who do English publications. We're always happy to get help, of course. It, it's always welcome. But, you know, in, in Taiwan, in, in France, in Germany, in many other markets, all the different languages here, it would be so good to have people helping out in the marketing team uh, to talk to journalists and to help get this message across. So... If you, if you come across a journalist, you know, browsing the web, um, you see an article and you think, ah, oh, they, they, could, they could write a good article about LibreOffice, or they may not be aware of LibreOffice, or, you know, they haven't talked about it for absolutely ages when you do some research, then, then talk to us. If, if you have experience talking to journalists, then, you know, by all means contact them. But if you're unsure, talk to us, join our, our marketing mailing list, and then, you know, we can work together on ideas, build something up, uh, and yeah, above all, um, good luck. So that was more of a lightning talk than anything, <laughs> I'm afraid, so only 17 minutes in, but if anybody's got any questions or thoughts 